Okay guys, we're going to have a look at an example here of uh, sex linked inheritance. The example we're going to have a look at is a, a really common uh, example and it's for haemophilia and haemophilia is a recessive gene um, and the dominant gene is the normal condition. All right? And it just so happens that this gene is carried on the X chromosome. So you can imagine, um, if we draw the chromosomes here, you know, this is the, the female X chromosome. And next to it, we might just draw a Y. We have a piddly little Y chromosome. It's, the gene is carried on the X chromosome. And that, that's the gene that we, we see there. So, so that, that, that's the situation uh, with a male who obviously has haemophilia. Now we have um, um, an X and Y genes which are used for sex determination. Um, if we write out a couple of genotypes here, XX being female and XY being male. Now they're the normal conditions. Um, if we if we start uh, writing in here and said, okay, this is what some normal individuals might look like with their genes, neither of them are carriers or affected by haemophilia. Um, let's have a look at some different scenarios here. A heredity for the male. The male could be affected by haemophilia, and this individual here would have haemophilia. They carry the gene for hem haemophilia. This male here has a, the gene for, for the normal condition. Okay, let's have a look at the female here. This female will be heterozygous. And we'll have one of each of the genes. And the other, only other alternative for a female is a, a female who has two of the haemophilia genes. Now this individual here would be affected by haemophilia, has a two recessive haemophilic genes, so they're going to have the disease. This individual here is a bit interesting. This is what we call uh, an individual who's heterozygous. In the case of diseases, uh, we often call them carriers. So this would carry the individual would carry the gene for haemophilia. It's possible they could pass on this gene without expressing it in the, themselves and, and therefore being a carrier for the disease. Now let's have a, a look at a, an example here with a Punnett square. Uh, let's have a look here at an example. Let's cross a, a male who is normal, that is infected by the disease, with a female carrier and see what we get. Okay. Now we go through the same process. A male has these gametes female can either supply the dominant or recessive gametes and it's important we write these out here. Uh, our Punnett square hasn't changed the sides represent the gametes the squares in the middle are going to represent the genotypes of the offspring. So I've written the female down the side there let's write the male up the top here doesn't really matter which one goes in which spot and we fill these out here. Okay, again, one gene from one parent, one gene or allele from the other parent. And one thing we'll, we'll obviously end up with is 50% is male and 50% female. Uh, but it's now also important to pay attention to uh, what the offspring are going to be. Now let's have a look at these here. So this male here will be affected by the disease. This male won't be. The two females will be normal. This female here being a carrier as we discussed before. So you guys can go and write the genotype and phenotype ratios out. Um, it's important to do both of them but we'd, we'd end up with um, two normal females and 50% of the males having the disease.